Okay, so I met up with my buddy who made this puzzle uh, a couple days back. And uh, we just met at like the restaurant around the corner and he showed up and I hadn't seen him in a while and he sat down at the booth opposite me and my girlfriend and uh, handed me this box. And when I dug into it, this thing was inside. Out of the way. Uh, anyway, he did provide some spoken instructions while we were at lunch, and he also uh, very kindly emailed me some uh, written instructions afterwards, and I'm going to go ahead and read them here. Anyway, to recap about the puzzle, he says, one, the puzzle can be opened without tools, in quotes. It just isn't practical, parentheses, especially on your deadline. The puzzle is slightly region locked. In our area, central Texas, the puzzle could probably be opened within one to 10 years. With that in mind, I recommend you use emulation tools. The puzzle has no electronics. The puzzle was manufactured from off the shelf raw materials and uses only manual machining methods. It's pretty impressive, he's got good machining chops. The outer housing is a four inch PVC coupling. I think he means this thing, which has pretty clearly been painted red. Three, the first goal tier is to mount the Christmas tree on the decorated platform. I see no Christmas tree. I'm assuming it's inside here somewhere. This requires opening the puzzle box. Uh, my guess is that's the decorated platform. We'll see. And if that's true, let me just decide here. I'm not reading anymore. <laughs> if that's true, if this is the quote decorated platform, this, this uh, aluminum feature is the quote decorated platform for the Christmas tree, then, you know, pretty obviously this clear plastic dome is gonna come off. The second goal here is to completely reset the puzzle to its original state. I'd recommend that the last reassembly step, or the first disassembly step, be completed with a three millimeter Allen wrench due to uh, inconsiderate manufacturing. It should be apparent why, we'll worry about that later. Third goal tier is to state a guess as to what all is inside the black box. This will be challenging and may take some intermediate, okay, all right. Uh, Okay, I think I'm going to skip reading the rest of it for now because it looks like he's going to go to, uh, and go through stuff that, like, we haven't seen yet. Right, so long story short, I, um, Tanner had told me informally when he first asked if I wanted to participate in this competition and be his solver, I, that the puzzle he was building was based on a comment, an idea that I had suggested to him, uh, like 10 years ago. And, uh, though I was trying to think about it and trying to think about it and trying to think about what it might have been until I actually met him and got the puzzle. And then while we were sitting there talking, it dawned on me what idea I had had that I must have mentioned to him that uh, he must be talking about. So I'm almost certain, based both on uh, my memory of talking to Tanner about puzzles and what it says in this email, that basically this, this is a thermal puzzle meaning that the series of moves that open it involve taking the whole assembly through different temperature stages. That, that is, like the first move will only open when the entire assembly is at elevated or depressed temperature relative to ambient. Uh, and I don't know uh, for sure what the range of temperatures is, but uh, his first clue that in Central Texas it could probably be opened within one through ten years indicates to me that the range, uh, the temperature swing through which this puzzle has to be taken doesn't exceed environmental temperatures. So, you know, it might be uh, freezing or even slightly below freezing or it might be, you know, as high as maybe 115 degrees Fahrenheit but it's not going to be, like, I'm not going to have to put this in boiling or near boiling water in order to open it, because obviously, <laughs> at least thus far, the weather in Texas has not actually reached temperatures that would boil water. So, 
I don't know whether the first move is going to be high temperature or low temperature. I think I'm going to guess low temperature. So my first plan, my first attempt at solving this is going to be to put it in a... Looks like most of the materials are probably waterproof. This is wood on the bottom, so it might matter. Um, I'm trying to decide if I need to protect it against condensation. I'm going to guess I probably don't. Um, or should I err on the side of caution? I don't know. I'm going to go look and see what I've got in the shed. If I can put this in a container, maybe with some desiccant, and then put it in the freezer, that's what I'll do. And if I don't have any uh, suitable container and or uh, desiccant handy, then I'll just put it in the freezer and uh, trust that it's going to be okay if there's a little bit of moisture condensed on it. And then I'm going to leave it um, overnight at uh, uh, freezing temperatures and we'll see what it looks like tomorrow. Okay, so this has been in here for more than 24 hours. Open it up. It doesn't look like the puzzle itself has changed in any way that I can see. Temperature in here is, I think that's about 15 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's get it. Take it out now. Oh yeah. Oops, almost. There. Okay. I think that's got to be the first move. Okay. I'm going to call that the first move. I bet the next thing we have to do is heat this up. Thanks to the good people at Hill Country Aviary for the loan of this incubator for bird chicks. It's been disinfected, I've been assured. It's been thoroughly disinfected according to their very professional standards, so there should be a minimum of, you know, hantavirus and uh, bird flu and so forth on these surfaces. And uh, here's the puzzle uh, after it's come up to room temperature, having come out of the freezer. Right now my assumption is that being able to rotate uh, this part 90 degrees to this position while it was cold was indeed the intended first move of the puzzle. Now I'm going to put it in to uh, this incubator, which is set to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Austin has, in fact, been considerably hotter than that. In the past 10 years, the record is, in fact, 112. But I'm hoping that 100 will be enough, <laughs> in part because this incubator, it turns out, only goes up to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So here we go. Open the door. Whoop. Nice and toasty in there. Put it over here close to the heating element and close it up. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we've been in here for about eight hours at 100 degrees, more or less. At least that's what it says here. I've got an IR uh, non-contact thermometer. I've been using to check the temperature of the puzzle itself intermittently all day. I'll go ahead and repeat that now. Yeah, it's been stable at about 95 degrees Fahrenheit, at least according to this thermometer, for several hours now. So I'm going to assume that it has more or less equilibrated. And it's done coming up to temperature. And let's see if we can uh, let's see if we can manipulate it in new ways now. Slide it over here if we can see it. Not quite. I know that the temperature extreme on the high side then shouldn't be any higher than 112, which is the 10 year high here in Austin, Texas. So, and since this, this incubator won't go over 100, I think what I'm gonna do now is pop in a temperature controlled hot plate that I have and turn it up to probably a bit over 
probably like 115 or 120 F. I think all these materials should be fine at that temperature. And count on the heat column plus the incubator to like bring this, bring this up to 112, 115, and then we'll try it again. Okay, I've got my uh, hot plate set up in here. You can see I've you see I've set the temperature to 50 degrees C, uh, which is a bit more than 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, I've turned it on. That indicates the temperature's at now, so it's going to start warming up to coming up to temperature. And I'm going to slide this over here. Close the cord in there. Okay, so this guy has been in here overnight. You can see that the hot plate is still uh, equilibrating at 50 C, which again is about 120 F. The incubator is equilibrating right now at 101 F. 100 is its uh, maximum set temperature. And we're gonna check now with the infrared thermometer and see what's going on with the puzzle itself. So. At the bottom, right next to the base there, about a centimeter above the aluminum surface of the hot plate, you can see the temperature is at about 124, 123 F. And let's try up at the top. Okay about the same distance down on the red PVC housing of the puzzle, much closer to the top. The temperature is much cooler. You can see that it's just about 100 there. And again, this has been going overnight. And if my hypothesis about how this puzzle is gonna open is correct, then I'll need to get the parts up around the top up to like 115 Fahrenheit. That's my goal. So the problem, and I really should have anticipated this, is that the thermal gradient along this height is pretty sharp. And because this guy, you know, if you add heat to the space, because this is thermoregulating the incubator, it's going to add less heat. So it's not like you can just set it to 100 C and it's gonna add a constant amount of heat to keep it at 100 C, then you can add more heat. No, it's going to add less heat over here in an effort to keep the temperature in the incubator down where it's set to. So I think I like the incub incubator idea originally, but um, unless I can get one that goes up as high as I need it to go, this is not going to work. I think what I'm going to do next is maybe put the hot plate in the puzzle, the puzzle on the hot plate inside a styro like a sealed styrofoam cooler and leave it like that for a while and see if I get um, more even heat distribution in the space. Okay, so uh, this was unexpected. I think I caught on, ca uh, caught on camera what happened, but in case not, um, <laughs> I got so preoccupied uh, with the problem of trying to get the whole puzzle uh, up to the temperature, my goal temperature that I imagined it needed to open at, that I forgot to actually try it at the lower temperature of 100 degrees F to see if it would open then. So I didn't, you know, but as I was manipulating it, uh, it was as I was taking down the incubator to set up the next thing I was gonna try, I noticed that it looked like it was just about ready to pop here. Yeah, this has already started cooling down to room temperature and this is getting harder to do, so I'm not gonna push it, but like, basically all I did was compress this just a little, this acrylic dome and just a little in this dimension and it popped right off. And if you look at how this thing is put together, you see this aluminum piece here also has these flat circles, flats on either side. And so my hypothesis is that the next step is gonna be for me to turn, somehow rotate that part, which I cannot do right now, so that it can, you know, likewise clear the two white metal uh, retaining tabs there. My guess is that in order to do that, I'm gonna have to cool it back down again, 
So I'm going to take this back over to the freezer and we'll check in again in a few hours. Okay, this guy's been in here about three hours now. Let's check it with the IR thermometer. Looks like it's about six degrees Fahrenheit on the side, which is, uh, should be plenty cold. Okay, now I expect to be able to turn this. <clears throat> okay, maybe not. Um, mm -hmm. Sounds like it's all still stuck, really stuck. <clears throat> Something's rattling in there now, which is new. Not good. What the heck is that? I don't know if you can see that, but that looks like a piece of Bismuth alloy. Okay, that's interesting. So the puzzle's not loose, but some low melting alloy fell out of it at cold temperatures, which means maybe that I had it almost hot enough earlier to loosen it up. And there's like a plug of this low melting alloy in there somewhere, but it didn't quite all come out when I had it up at high temperature. That's my guess anyway, so I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to put, put this little piece of uh, alloy in an aluminum weigh boat and then put it on my hot plate and turn it up to, I don't know, I'll have to do some research and figure out what the right temperature, what temperature ranges. I guess it can't be that hot, so I'll turn it up to 150F and then just watch it as it goes up and see if this melts and if so at what temperature and then if uh, once I know that temperature if it's reasonable uh, I could bring the whole puzzle up to that temperature and see what happens. I was thinking about using one of these little aluminum weigh boats but I think it's gonna be hard to see this this tiny piece of metal in that weigh boat so I'm gonna skip this and just let it melt or try to melt it directly on the surface aluminum surface here I don't think it'll hurt too much. I've also got a piece of uh, black elect just electrical tape here to give me a non-reflective surface where I can hopefully get a decent um, reality check with the uh, the IR thermometer okay so right now it's set to said 253 We're, I want to start at uh, 150 F which is about 66 C 66 and go Oh, okay, now it's thermoregulating. And uh, now what we do is wait. Okay, it says it's a 66C. I'm gonna try to measure with the IR thermometer. I get 143, so, you know, not far off. Reading is jumping around a lot though, yeah. And not much happening here. Let's keep going up. Go ahead and set it to the boiling temperature of water. Okay, there it is, hot enough to boil water. At least according, at least according to uh, its own internal temperature sensor, like on the IR thermometer here which is really jumpy. I'm saying temperatures as high as like 
191, something like that. Yeah. So that is way too hot to be like outdoor weather pretty much anywhere. And this stuff is still gonna be hot. Does not appear to be melting. So I'm gonna have to revisit my hypothesis about the low melting alloy. Okay, so I've been letting this thing warm back up to room temperature. Still a little cold to the touch. And like playing with it, manipulating it, trying to figure out what else I might do. I hit on, I noticed this brass pen in the middle, which is obviously a different, obviously, you know, this is aluminum here, it appears. This is aluminum. This is some kind of plastic, which I haven't identified. This is aluminum. This, and then the center is clearly brass, but this around it, it looked like it's a different piece. So on a hunch, I got a magnet and tested it. Boop. Sure enough, that is a uh, little outer shell of the inner pin with the spiral thread on it is um, some kind of ferrous metal, almost certainly steel. And so I also note there's a little divot here in the middle of this brass thing. So my new hypothesis is that I'm supposed to bring this guy up to high temperature and then push this pin and that this pin will come loose due to the differential expansion of the, of the metals with temperature. So I've got the setup that I was gonna use earlier when, when this thing sort of popped off to my surprise. And this is just, you can see I got a hot plate in there and this is a styrofoam cooler and I've cut, uh, cut away some part of the lid so the cord can pass out, can pass through, interesting choice of words. So I'm gonna set this for like, uh, I think I've decided on 57C, which is like 134F, which is <laughs> the highest recorded temperature ever on the surface of the earth. So I'm gonna uh, leave that in there to equilibrate for a while. Hopefully inside the styrofoam cooler, the thermal gradient will not be, uh, will be more even and I'll get more even heating here. And then I'll come back uh, and see if I can't push part of this pen out at elevated temperature. All right, now all we do is wait. Also, while I was playing with it, some more chunks of bismuth uh, fell out of it, some bigger pieces. And I, I still don't know what's up with the, uh, with the bismuth. Like, maybe that's the prize inside and it like shattered. Maybe it's intended as a distractor. Okay. Blanket, puffy jacket. See how this is doing. It's been here for about three hours, I think, maybe two and a half. Open this up. Let's see what it looks with the IR thermometer. Oh yeah, 126. Go, see if this works. <clears throat> it does not. Well, yeah, it budges a little, but not much, and I don't want to break it. Um, oh, okay. Cool. I don't know if you saw that. Keep going. Yeah, all right. Cool. Oh, that's hard to do. All right. Okay, that's, I think that's as far as it goes. So hopefully y'all saw most of that. What happened here was that, 
Oh, wait. Now this guy's poking out. Hold on. What happened here was that I was able to use this, like, rotary phone dial thing to, like, rotate this plate, like, uh, 90 degrees. You can see from the... Kind of see that this mark here was aligned with that one. So, this poked up. I'll try pushing on it now. Okay, no, it doesn't push down. It does seem that's definitely progress, though. So I was hoping here that this would rotate some more, but it doesn't, and that's okay. What happened last time here, I know I caught it on camera, but it was probably not that easy to see, is we had warmed this puzzle up to like 115 degrees Fahrenheit, and I was trying to push this down which I still can't do. I was trying to push this pin down and that didn't work. And so I tried some other stuff and then I discovered at uh, elevated temperature, this dial plate, finger plate, rotated 90 degrees. And as that happened, this brass pin came up proud about an eighth of an inch of uh, the steel housing that it's in. So now what I've done is I've cooled the puzzle down again to freezing temperatures uh, in the theory that something uh, that maybe the finger plate would rotate further or something else would come loose or this would be possible to push down but no so that didn't work so uh, I'm kind of out of ideas Okay, so I thought about this some more, and a couple of possibilities occurred to me. Now, I've been trying my best to heat up this whole assembly more or less evenly, but that might not be the way it's supposed to be solved. Um, it's possible that I'm supposed to heat up, like, some parts, and keep other parts cool, or vice versa, and that's the first possibility. The, uh, the second possibility is that the parts are supposed to be heated in a certain order. Now, because I'm using this temperature-controlled hot plate, uh, to heat it up, and just setting the puzzle on the hot plate like this, uh, I've been heating the parts from the bottom up. But maybe that's the wrong order. Maybe they're supposed to be heated from the top down. So, to kind of um, address both possibilities, I've decided to try a different heating method, which is to apply a heat gun to the top of the puzzle, like so. Uh, and since I'm still working uh, from the idea that this sort of rotary phone finger plate on top is supposed to keep rotating, I'm going to try to use the heat gun on the high setting to really pour the heat on uh, the green plastic ring here at the top and then manipulate the finger plate to see what happens. So uh, I'll bring you back in a second and we'll give that a try. Yes! Ah, fantastic. Oh yeah, that's it. Keep going. There we go. turned almost exactly what see that would turn 90 degrees plus it's at least 180 so yeah to at least 270 I didn't see how many times it went around okay finally now what <laughs> okay so this thing has cooled down 
uh, turning this plate, as you saw, like completely lowered the sheath around this bla uh, brass pin. So I'm gonna try pushing at room temperature. It doesn't seem to do much. I'm gonna try pulling. So it does turn. Something I haven't done yet. What about the other way? Oh, it's stiff the other way, huh? Let's see if it just unscrews. Okay, it does turn in both directions. Doesn't look like anything's loosening. So I feel like it has to be something to do with this pen since the last step, you know, uh, basically exposed the pen. This is room temperature. Feels the same all the way around. I ro I'm rotating it and sort of uh, rapidly pushing and pulling it up and down. I don't feel any like catches or anything. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do is pop this guy back in the freezer and see how uh, this pen behaves when it's at just a few degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, I've had this guy in the freezer overnight. Temperature at the plastic disc is, looks like about three, sorry. Yeah, two or three degrees Fahrenheit. That's four, 4.2 there. Yeah, we'll call it that. Okay, let's see if we can do anything with this pen. Push it in. Nope, pull it out. It's tighter. That's interesting. Oh yeah, that just doesn't spin when it's cold. That tells me something. I don't know if I'm gonna get it open or not. Okay. Yeah, it definitely does not turn. Okay, so I was playing with this as it started to warm back up. Looks like it's now at about, sorry. Yeah, about 15 degrees Fahrenheit. I was playing with this and I noticed that the pen was loosening up a little bit, so I thought I'd turn on the camera. Yeah, yeah, there it goes, it's turning. That definitely turned in, rotated in. It seemed to screw down, like it lost some height here quite a bit. Um, but it seems to be at the limit of its travel. Okay. Pull, push. Do we turn it upside down? What do we do? Slide here, slide there. The bottom. Oh. <laughs> more, um, more something. Looks like bits of solder. Look at that. More of this. I don't know if it's low melting alloy. It doesn't look like the bismuth I saw earlier, so this is a bit confusing. As I've had two different kinds of metal fall out of this puzzle. Now, if you can see there, like, these pieces look a lot more like um, solder or uh, solder if you're across the pond. Uh, in any case, these look a lot more like what I would expect a low uh, temperature melting eutectic alloy to look like if it had dribbled out of some kind of internal assembly inside this puzzle. And if you look in there, um, I think you can probably see that down in there. Hold on, let me get a flashlight. If you look down in there, you can see what is pretty clearly a large piece of bismuth inside the puzzle. And my guess is 
Uh, that bismuth is actually the prize inside the Cracker Jack box here. And uh, probably a piece of it broke off earlier, it fell out, and that's what I saw uh, the first time I had little bits of metal falling out of here. But now I think the idea I had at that time, that maybe there is some low temperature melting point alloy inside this device, is considerably more uh, plausible given this like solder or solder looking material. So I'm going to do again what I did then, which is to put this stuff on a temperature controlled hot plate and run it up and see uh, if it melts at a reasonable temperature. And if so, I'm then going to follow on and bring the whole puzzle up to that temperature and uh, see what happens. Here we go, putting it right here on the hot plate. I'm going to set it up to like 60 degrees and go. Okay, there it is, about 40 degrees. You can see that this guy is turned mushy, 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 mushy. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do is pop this guy back into my, uh, put this whole setup back into my little styrofoam uh, oven, low temperature oven that I've improvised. And then just repeat this cycle with the whole puzzle in there and then see, see if anything moves. Okay, this has been in here for about four hours. Let's go ahead and check on the temperature. Looks like about 150 or thereabouts. That should be plenty. <laughs> That's quite warm <laughs> to the touch. Adjust the camera here, bear with me. Okay. That didn't do it. Okay, now that turns freely now. That's interesting. Doesn't seem to be doing anything. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> There's more. There's more of that fusible alloy. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. All right. Okay, what do we got? What do we got? Um, all right. I don't know what the hell that does. Uh... Um, okay, I think I've got it open. I think this is the last step. I think this is like the Cracker Jack prize here. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Okay. I think that's done. in there. Oh god, that's <laughs> I think there's something else in there. What is that? Okay, I think that's ah. I think that's part of it, but I'm feeling something moves, but I think it's a part of the puzzle. So Yeah, I think that's all of it. Um This was clearly intended to come out. This thing. Can y'all see that still? Okay yeah. This thing was clearly intended to come out. Um, something in there. Oh! I was supposed to be. It's confusing because it has a flat on it, but I think that was just to make it fit in there. This is the Christmas tree. That's totally it. Totally it. Sleigh bells ring, 
Are you listening? In the lane, something, something. I did it. That was awesome. Um, I'll have more to say about this in a minute. I have to kind of um, emotionally process uh, uh, the the fact that I finally got it open. This is, yeah, let me, just, let me just cut it right there and I'll come back after I've collected my thoughts. Okay, this video is already running long, so I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. Um, Tanner, when you watch this, thank you, man, from the bottom of my heart. Uh, for all the time and attention I know it took to make this amazing object and to give me this amazing experience. I don't know how I'm ever going to even come close to getting you back, but uh, I promise I'm going to try. Uh, I was able to achieve the first of the three goals you set out for me. As you can see here, I got the puzzle open and set up the Christmas tree on this platform. Um, if this video does well and there's sufficient interest, I will maybe follow up with one or more additional videos about how to... Uh, reset this puzzle and how I think it works. Um, we might even have you on to make a cameo if you're up for it uh, to talk about your thought process while you were designing it. Um, to everyone else who's watching who made it all the way through, uh, thank you very much for your kind attention. If you are interested in any particular follow-up content or there's anything I didn't cover here that you'd like to ask or maybe see in a possible future video, please do let me know in the comments. Finally, to those following along with the 2023 Puzzle Advent Calendar, happy 18th of December. Please do not forget to subscribe to at Mr. Puzzle's channel to make sure you catch tomorrow's video. You'll find that link down in the description field below. Merry Christmas to everyone who celebrates. Season's greetings to all, and uh, Happy New Year. We'll see you in 2024.